Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. So Warren Gatland has named his Wales squad to take on Italy this weekend in the Six Nations. A huge game for both teams, both winless so far in this year's championship. And it's a team news which I think is a bit of a mixed bag, really, from Welsh perspective. That's what I'm going to be talking about in this video anyway. Getting into Gatlin's team news, he continues to struggle with the balance between getting players' experience and moving other players out of the squad. I think that's reflected in this team news, but that's what I'm going to get into. So do subscribe to the channel and like the video if you are able to or if you haven't already. And drop a comment down below. What do you make of Warren Gatlin's team selection for this match against Italy in Rome? All right, let's get into it. So the team is as follows. You've got Wynne Jones, Ken Owens and Thomas Francis in the front row. Daffod Jenkins and Adam Beard in the second row. And then it's Jack Morgan, Justin Tiprick and Talupe Falatau in the back row. Reese Webb comes into the squad at scrum half. I'll get back to that in a moment. That is one of the headlines. Owen Williams continues at fly half with Joe Hawkins and Mason Grady in the centres. And then it's Rio Dyer, Josh Adams and Liam Williams, the back three. Uh, Dan Bigger is injured. Lewis Reese Zamet is on the bench as well. Uh, so a few different things, really, I think, for, for us to try and get our teeth into. First of all, Rhys Webb. He's starting a game in the Six Nations for the first time since 2017. And his la last uh, test start at all was three years ago. So that's certainly um, a selection, I think, that before the Six Nations would have been a surprise. I know he's been part of the squad. And Gatlin's basically said in his press conference that he's been training so well and that's why he's starting, essentially. At first, I was pretty uninspired by having Reese Webb in there. But Gatland, to be fair to Gatland, I, like, I don't necessarily love his team selections, but he always explains it and kind of makes sense of why he's chosen those people. So Reese Webb, he said, he's training really, really well. And if you want to look at the rest of that back line with Owen Williams, Joe Hawkins, Mason Grady, you've got Rio Dyer in there as well. To have an experienced head, what is he, 34 now, Reese Webb, in that position of number nine. I know Thomas Williams could have probably filled that position as well, but you can kind of make sense of why Reese Webb has been selected. But it also flies in the face a little bit of what we're hearing from Wales at the moment, where Gatland is continually talking about getting players' experience and then also probably needing to move players on. It, it jars with that in a way when you bring someone of Reese Webb's age and experience back into the squad when you talk about trying to move the squad on. Is it just a case that there aren't any better options at this moment in time? Has he just out-trained Thomas Williams? Is that why he is there? But I think it's probably a selection call um, that even though Gatlin has explained it quite well, it's going to be a little bit uninspiring to, to many Welsh fans. We'll wait and see. Elsewhere, Rio Dyer comes into the back three. As I mentioned, Lewis Rees Samet is on the bench. Gatlin has explained that by saying that... Rhys Samet and the way that Italy like to run it from everywhere, this Six Nations, they spread it quite wide. They like to play a lot. He thought that maybe Rhys Samet could have a better impact later on in the game. I'll be honest, I, I just don't really see that. When Rhys Samet is your, in terms of pace, your most dangerous attacking option, would you not just rather have him from the start of the game rather than waiting till later on? I like Rio Dyer. He's early in his international career, but I think the jury's still out on him really in terms of how he can 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 go at the highest level on a consistent basis. And let's not forget that this is a big game for Wales. There's pressure on this. They lose this, they're going to be looking at the wooden spoon. I don't think many people would give them too much a hope of beating France away next weekend. So there is pressure. We'll see how they deal with it. Also, uh, Daffod Jenkins, Jack Morgan, Liam Williams and Wynne Jones are all also coming in, as I mentioned. And it's Alan Wynne Jones, Lee Halfpenny, Chris Chunza who drop out. Gareth Thomas is on the bench. So, as I say, I think it's a mixed bag. You look at someone like Justin Tiprick in that back row, I would have liked to have seen Chris Chunza in there or Tommy Reffel. Like, I like Jack Morgan in there, so I'd have been tempted to go with Chunza. The fact that he's dropped out, I think, is disappointing. So, all over that team where you look at it, you see this kind of wrestle between the old and the new. And I'm just not convinced that they're striking the right balance at the moment. And look, Warren Gatlin knows a lot more about this than I do. And you probably can't just throw the kids at it. But equally, Wales aren't really really going anywhere at the moment and I don't think you don't look at that team when you see Tiprick in the back row for example just to name one player yeah I don't, I don't know there's something about it that I think there are better options there I'd have liked to see Chunza involved I would have had Dan Bigger involved but that has been explained that he is injured I still think when he is fit he should be the Wales fly half similar to what I said with Reese Webb where you look at you talk about moving this squad on and 
I know Williams isn't the most experienced player, but in terms of age, I don't think he's necessarily the future either. So there's a few positions where I'm not sure whether they're building for the future at the moment, but Bigger is injured, so it makes sense why he continues at fly half. And I think with him at fly half, and then particularly those centres, Hawkins and Grady, I'm, I am really excited about them. I think they have the makings to be the Welsh centre partnership going forward for many, many years to come. So I'm glad they're getting another run out, but this is a big, big game. Big, big game against Italy. Uh, a few other just mentions. Rhys Davies, obviously, on the bench. Uh, I think there's a lot of people that would like to see Kieran Williams on the bench in place of George North as well. North is still there. So as I say, I feel like this is a Wales team who have been struggling for identity. They've been struggling with off-the-field issues before the tournament and during the tournament. They're struggling with performances in the Six Nations so far as well. And it continues to be team selection, in my opinion, that seems quite muddled from Warren Gatland. I think he has an idea of what he is trying to do, but I'm just not convinced at this moment in time that he is able to do it. And would Wales almost be better off of forgetting about a whole four-year cycle, forget about this Six Nations, forget about the World Cup as well, purely start selecting, base, basing it upon how you can move forward in years to come. And actually, I think there's a pretty good argument, and I believe someone pointed it out in the comments for the video I did earlier this week on, on Wales selection, that in turn, if you're picking a team which has the best chance of winning at the weekend, that's also by playing all those younger players as well. It's not a case of you either pick the experienced players and have a better chance of winning or the younger players. Actually, maybe both of those things, it's better just to go with the guys you want to build for the future. And I think there is a case to say for Wales at the moment. Let's see how they get on against Italy. This Italian team, have been really impressive at home against France and Ireland. Less impressive away to England. Let's not forget that. Against England, who haven't been playing that well themselves. I appreciate it was at Twickenham. But actually, England did a bit of a job in them at that game. I was at the match. England seemed pretty comfortable most of the time. There were a few occasions where Italy were able to stretch them. But England always looked the more likely to win that game. But then we do have these two matches at home for Italy against the two best teams in the world in terms of the world rankings, the two best teams in the competition, where they performed really, really well. I'll be honest, my, my head says that Wales will actually get the job done here, that they'll be able to pull something out. My heart says Italy are going to do it and it's going to be a big victory for the Italians. I think in terms of the championship, I'd rather Italy get a win because I don't want to see them immediately go back to losing all five games again after they were able to, to get the one win last season. But it's a big game for both teams. But where are Wales going? I'm still not I'm still not entirely sure what the current identity of this team is and where they're trying to get to and when they're trying to get to it. Are they trying to get themselves in position to, to mount a charge at the World Cup? Which it's just not going to happen, is it? Even with the best of intentions. That's why I think they should build for further down the line and aim for perhaps the next World Cup and looking to be better in a year's time in the, ne in the, next, uh, in the next Six Nations. Those are my kind of general thoughts on it. I hope I've explained them as well as possible. Muddled team selection. Some bits I like, but I want to see more of those young players in there. It's probably the best way to sum it up. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Next one.